Kennedy was small, a little more than 23,000 votes. Now, why was Grover Cleveland elected president? There hadn't been a Democratic president since James Buchanan. 1856. Thanks, Al. Okay, the Democrats had been out of office for 24 years. Now, what brought them back in? Bernie. Uh, maybe time for a change. Could be. It worked for the Republicans a few years ago. Well, how about something more specific? Helen. Oh, sorry, I thought you had your hand up. Mary Ann. Well, the people were upset because the government was crooked. Why? What had the previous administration done? Richie. They let their big shot pals grab public land. Good, but what else? The really big reason. Anybody? Come on. Something the Republican candidate said that was supposed to have cost him the election. <coughs> Helen. Rum, Romanism, and Rebellion. What's that? She said, Rum, Romanism, and Rebellion. Good. Very good, Helen. But I sure would like to help Helen get out of her shell. Yeah, you know, I would too. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, aren't you going to ask me why? Why, Mr. Rieger? Because you see before you a free man. You know, you do look different. Already? I knew it. I knew it. Would you be willing to tell us why you're a free man? Because for the first time since forever, I will no longer serve as faculty advisor to the junior class review. Bill, you've always been. Always has just ended. How'd you get away with it? I just told him, that's all. I said, Mr. Kaufman, class night will have to get along without me. But, Mr. Rieger, why would you want to give something like that up? I mean, it seems to me that it would be so rewarding. Miss Johnson, you have a lot to learn. That's why I'm a student teacher. I said, Mr. Kaufman, <laughs> examine my life, and you'll understand. Up at 6.30 in the morning, a cup of coffee, that long, vicious crawl on the freeway to school. Classes, 8 to 2.30. Conferences, squabbles with pupils, with parents, with, with teachers. Just before the long push home. After dinner, 162 papers to correct. Tomorrow's lesson to prepare. Finally, my work done, I stagger off to bed where my wife is always sound asleep. In the morning, she's sarcastic. Time to get up, lover boy. I'm not about to add auditions, rehearsals, songwriting, playwriting to that. But what about class night? Well, who's going to be faculty advisor? That's Mr. Kaufman's problem. As for me. I'd love to take Mr. Rigger's place. Well, so far you're the only volunteer for the job. Well, I'm not exactly Mike Nichols, but I do know my way around the footlights. I have to think about it. And I'm experienced. You know, in my sophomore year in college, I played Lady Sneerwell in School for Scandal. You should have seen me. I was a howl. I bet you were. Well, face the facts, Mr. Kaufman. I'm young and hip, and I can show old Walt Whitman High a class night it'll never forget. I just know it can do it. Okay? I'll get back to you. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I've just had a taste of today's cafeteria special. That means I may have only minutes to live. Now, do you really think I want to spend my last few precious moments discussing Alice Johnson and her problems? I just wanted to tell you a few things about her that you don't know. Alice has already told me more about Alice than I care to know. <laughs> macaroni and cheese. Why is it that every school dietitian insists on macaroni and cheese? It has a great deal of energy. And that's only one of the things I'm afraid of. If there's anything worse than macaroni and cheese, it's tuna fish and noodles. Mr. Kaufman. No. I'm sorry, the answer is no. Believe me, I'd rather say yes. It would make things a lot easier. No, wait a minute. No, no, no. Is that it? The convincing is over? Well, you've made up your mind. Yes, but that's no reason for you to quit without really trying. <laughs> Mr. Kaufman. I think Alice would do a lot better job than some teacher you'd have to force into doing it. Maybe. Maybe, though. You know how I hate forcing. Anything else? 
Yes. A drive, a desire will more than make up for a lack of experience. That's good. All right, she can do it. And lately, she's become very responsible. What'd you say? I said she can have the job. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Don't tell her whatever you do. I know that girl. Once she starts thanking, there's no stopping. Bon appetit. I should be so lucky. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Thank you. You won't be sorry. I promise you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be the best class night ever. Well, I'm really gratified by the turnout. You're probably all disappointed that Mr. Rieger won't be your faculty advisor this year, but I'll try to fill his shoes as well as I can. I want you to know, and I mean this, I'm your advisor, and that's all I'll do, advise. I'll give you the benefit of my know-how, but please, I'm not in charge, and I'm not the symbol of authority. I'm here simply to help. But this is your show, yours, and you can do anything you want to do. I'll help, but believe me, it's your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's begin. Richie, take it away. Okay, first tryouts. Magnitudes. You hear magnitudes? Yeah. 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 I was afraid you wouldn't show up. I promised you. Only, I think it's really a big mistake. You'll be fine. I'm never wrong about talent. Broadway hits. No, it's true. Okay, something's wrong. What is it? I can tell. Come on, what's the problem? Miss Johnson, we want to level with you. Sure, didn't I tell you this is your show? That's just it. It's our show, but it's kind of like all the other shows. Just like last year's class night. And the year before. We want our show to be different. Yeah. yeah. Right. I agree. Definitely. Well, we'll have to do something unusual. Something that hasn't been done before. Anybody got a notion? Maybe we can take a look. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sorry. What was that? Helen, that, that's out of sight. W what'd you say? Hey, that is different. <laughs> Gotta watch them quiet ones. Yeah. Yeah. Helen, do you have an idea? Does she have an idea? Yeah. What was it? I didn't hear. I said... Come on, come on. Come on. Well, actually, it's not really a new idea. Well, it's new around here. <laughs> <laughs> they do it in a show in New York. I read about it. Well, well what is it? What? At the end of the show, everybody in the cast, well, yeah. they take off their clothes. You see? <laughs> they take off their clothes. <laughs> they take off their clothes. <laughs> your principal, I felt compelled to call the special assembly. There are still certain members of the student body mm, that still refuse to listen to reason. And I am serving notice that I am not going to tolerate a moment longer the scandalous wearing of miniskirts by the members of the football team. Sure glad to see you, Mr. Kaufman. Always nice to run into you, Mr. Lane. May I inquire what you were doing there? Mr. Kaufman, Richie... You were imitating me. Yes, sir. Young man, you're making a very serious mistake. Haven't you ever noticed the rhythm of my speech? The rhythm of my speech? The way it goes up on the end of a sentence? <laughs> did you ever notice that? Yeah, how did you know that? You'd be surprised what I know. And don't forget the gesture. The gestures are very expressive. I want to see you in my office. <laughs> Zigfell. <laughs> you know, Miss Johnson, how important the class night program is. What it means to the parents as well as the student body. Yes, of course. But I wonder if you're aware that it may prove to be a crucial night for you. Me? Yes, the progress report on your work at Whitman is due next Monday. Oh. Right after class nine. Yes. So that if the show goes well, it won't do your report any harm. You see? I thought that you should know that. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kaufman. You're welcome. As for myself, I ask very little. After more class nights than I care to remember, I'll consider it a smashing success if I stay awake till the final curtain. Oh. You won't sleep through this one. Oh, you have a few little surprises for us, Miss Johnson? Oh, yes, Mr. Kaufman. Quite a few little surprises. <laughs> one big one. <laughs> Richie's going to do this impression of Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Kaufman? Yeah, and then <laughs> the Magnitudes are going to sing a song, and then they're going to undress, stark naked. Alice, you got to be kidding. I don't think she is. They want their class night to be different. Well, I can't say that I've heard of any other nude class nights. I guess it symbolizes their freedom. I'm almost afraid to ask, but have they rehearsed it yet? No, not yet. Frankly, I haven't had the nerve. Well, Alice, I think you'd better find the nerve. I know, but I don't know how I can. You see, the worst of it is, you'll never guess whose idea it was. It wasn't me. It was Helen. Helen Loomis? So how could I say no to her? For the first time in her life, she volunteered something. And all the kids think she's so hip and daring coming up with an idea like that. And I just can't take that away from her. What would she think of me? Well, Alice, do you want to be Miss Popularity or do you want to be a school teacher? Pete, wait. Well, that's the choice she's got to make. Because if you want to be a school teacher, once in a while you're going to have to be unpopular. Sometimes kids have to do things that they don't like. That's where a teacher comes in. So maybe you better decide if what you're doing is for them or for you. Well, I understand. Now, she made a promise to them and she doesn't want to break it. Oh, but Alice, you've got to break it. But I always do things like this. Or at least they happen to me. I don't know which. But I want to do right. I really do. In my head, I get an idea, and it seems so wonderful. But when it comes out, it's different, changed. And sometimes it's funny, and I make people laugh. But sometimes what I do isn't so funny, like this time. Why do I always mess up? 
because of the kind of things you go for. Like, how can anyone make a junior class night different? <laughs> but you, you try. And that's why we love you, right, Pete? Sure. That's what this is all about, isn't it? I'll tell him tomorrow. Stand by for dress rehearsal! Stand by, please! And when they finish this song, I put on all the lights, right? Oh. Yes, Howie, that's perfect. Just perfect. One other thing. What? You know, uh, when they, uh, when they disrobe, how you want the lights in? Low key. Very low key. <laughs> Why don't I just put them out altogether? I wish we could. I mean, just make them dim. I don't know why I have to take my clothes off, too. Well, they said I did. It's everybody or nobody. Don't you want to? I don't know. If the others don't cop out, I guess I won't either. How do I look? Beautiful. Oh, really? Do I really look nice? You really look beautiful. Well, now you better take your place on stage. Am I allowed backstage? Oh, hi, Pete. Well, everything's happening, huh? Yeah. Oh, Al. Here. That's better. Thanks, Miss Johnson. Anybody ever tell you you're groovy? Hi, Mr. Dixon. Hi, Al. Well, having told them that the big numbers out doesn't seem to have hurt your popularity any. Yeah, well, Pete, I'm awful busy, so I better get... Alice. Going. You have told them that the nude number's out. Oh, Alice. I want to, Pete, but I just can't. The words won't come out of my mouth. Well, in that case, you'd better force them. A lot of these kids have worked too hard to have their records ruined because you're afraid to hurt their feelings. Their futures are on the line. And you're afraid that they won't think you're groovy. I'm not groovy. I'm not anything. Alice, you can be anything you want. Again, the final dress. There's something I have to tell you. Excuse me, Miss Johnson, but before you... Well, the cast has asked me to say something. Lay it on, Helen. Anyhow, when you told us in the beginning, and kept telling us, that this was our show, well, gee, some of us just doubted it a little. After all, you are a teacher. <laughs> but you really meant it. This is our show. Thanks to you. And we just want to say thanks. That's all. Okay, let's get started. Let's get the Come on. Hold it, everybody. Please, quiet. Uh, I've decided, since the run-through was so good, we don't need a dress rehearsal. <laughs> but what we do need is an undress rehearsal. Ms. Johnson, you mean we have to... Right, the finale. Just the way you're going to do it in front of your parents and teachers and Mr. Kaufman and everybody. Well, we want to get it right, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Well, don't we? Yeah. Good. Okay, uh, Howie. Uh, where's Howie? Right here. Uh, Howie, I changed my mind about the lighting. Instead of low-key lighting, I want you to bring the lights all the way up. Huh? Uh, I want the stage to be just as bright as possible. Okay. Okay, magnitudes, let's take it eight bars from the end. Let's just hear that much now so we know where we are, okay? Let's go. <laughs> Richie, what's the problem? 
problem? You're still completely dressed. I'm working on it. Bernie, what's your problem? These buttonholes are too small. Come on, Cass. We've got to do better than this. I mean, the audience is going to be home and in bed, and you're still going to be staggering around the stage. Well, what's going on? Well, are you going to take your clothes off or not, huh? <laughs> Miss Johnson, since it was my idea in the first place, well, do you mind? And I think I'm speaking for almost everyone. Do you mind if we, you know, finish like this? I mean, what really matters is that you said we could do what we wanted. And I guess the idea of it is what appealed to us. Okay? Oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, if that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your show. Oh, thank you. Well, maybe we can end the show by just bowing. Yeah. 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 I think that will be just fine. Bowing? Hold it. Wait a minute. Bowing? Wait, that's no way to end this show. You have to do something more spectacular than that, more... Let me see, like, um... The school song. Oh. Oh. Wait, 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 back, back, down, down. Wait a minute, it's got a lot going for it. The parents love it. It gives them that sense of security they so desperately need. How about it? One rousing chorus of the alma mater. It'll send them home smiling. The alma mater? At Walt Whitman, we consider it dynamite. <laughs> well... Try it, try it. You'll see it's wonderful, just wonderful. Good luck, everybody. Good luck. Housing chorus of the alma mater. It'll send them home soon. How about it? One... Socko ending. <laughs> the school song. Let's try it, everybody. Ready? One, two. A sun lit at the shining tower that's rained against Two. Go on, take another one, Bernie. You earned it. <laughs> oh, Helen. You were wonderful. Congratulations. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. But it's really Miss Johnson who deserves the credit. Thank you, Helen. But that's not true at all. It's really Miss Johnson who deserves the credit. Do wild impersonations. Oh, that's no big thing. I have all kind of hidden challenges. Anyway, Mrs. Johnson's a cool director. Thanks, Richie. Now, wait a minute. Everyone is getting congratulated except me. Don't forget, I'm the one that picked Miss Hit of the Evening Johnson here to produce the show. Yes, you sure did. And I might add, over almost insurmountable objections. Most of them mine. <laughs> Good work. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. You did a wonderful job. You know, there was one thing I wondered about, though. What? The ending. I mean, I know the alma mater was my idea, but I really thought you might come up with a little more exciting, more original ending. Oh, we did have our own original ending, didn't we? <laughs> well, I, I don't understand, then. Why didn't you use it? Well, uh... Well, uh, we felt that uh, the alma mater was so much, um... so much, uh... 